My name is Arthur Stanley Katz, K-A-T-Z, Arthur Stanley. I enlisted in World War II in the United States Cavalry. Uh, that's part of the United States Army. And in 1942, when I enlisted, they had a, a, a draft. That they don't have that today, okay? Which meant that uh, when they called your number, you went in. And if they didn't call your number right away, you didn't. And they had an exception to the draft, which I thought was really unfair, but it favored me. It's said nothing I can do about it. If you were a student doing B work or better at a high school or a college, they would exempt you from the draft. So that um, the theory being that all the bright guys should uh, be left behind and take all the dummies, I suppose, which is unfair. Okay, that's how it worked out. But I gave up my draft deferment because I thought the war was very important for two reasons. One, I love this country. I was born here. My parents came from other countries. My mother came from England. My father came from Russia. Okay, So I was a first-generation American. Secondly, I'm Jewish, and I knew what Hitler was doing in, in Europe would ultimately, if he won, come into this country. So I wasn't about to want that to happen. So I enlisted. And I was very happy that I did. And uh, I served for three years. I enlisted in November, and I got discharged in November. So it was a full three years. I remember, as a matter of fact, three years and a couple of months, weeks. And uh, the war was um, good for me in the sense that it helped me grow up. Okay, I was only I was 19. I was a college uh, junior, and I thought I knew everything. Which, of course, was wrong. Okay. I know almost everything, but I, I'm joking. Uh, I learned a lot in the Army, including when to keep my mouth shut because I got court-martialed for arguing with authority. Even though I was right, you were wrong, okay? So, um, in June, the weather was really nice. I step around the corner, and just as I did, a woman steps out of the kitchen and stretches her arms, and the sun was shining behind her. The beautiful halo effect. The moment I saw that woman, I fell in love with her. And I said to myself, I'm going to marry that woman, okay? And that, that, that's all it said. And three days later, I uh, happened to be my wife, going to be lady. She was the, the, the head chef. She was running the whole kitchen. And uh, I remember, I, she didn't speak English then. I said I was going to marry her. And she said, I remember she smiled. And she said, we've got to say, we'll see. <laughs> and, uh, and I kissed a little bit uh, lightly on, on the forehead, okay? Anyway, we had a very, we developed a relationship, and um, which was frowned upon only because, even though she was never a Nazi, when, and that's why she worked for us, uh, they issued a declaration uh, not to, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, fraternize with the enemy. The idea was we were trying to round up all the Nazis, so we wanted to keep communication of war. Limited was it gave me the opportunity to meet my wife. And that was the best thing ever happened to me. <laughs> so I ended up, you know, as a real winner at that point. And, uh, and my wife, as you can see in those photographs, are remarkable. You know, I'm not a dummy. When I mom The moment I saw this woman, I said, I'm going to marry her, because you can tell by looking at her, you know, I wasn't, you know, going to make any mistakes. Um, she was a remarkable human being. Uh, she was, I said, the, our uh, uh, chef at the at the uh, uh, villa where we were staying, and uh, she was trained in Germany. Have a system uh, of apprenticeship. So you, when you begin young, they train you what you want to be. And she wanted to be a hotel chef, and they trained her for that. So she was able to make you know large meals and everything else. So um, so I met my wife. I got my military, uh, I mean, medical expenses taken care of. So I, I took my, 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 my squad of, of seven guys and myself on this tank that we borrowed. And I had the tank come up to the, the first pillbox, lower his cannon, and he fired a, a round right against the, the, the side of the uh, pillbox. It never penetrated, but it made a lot of noise. It shook everybody up on the inside, okay? And then I remember I went around the edge and I poked my head up in German and I said, uh, surrender, because you're surrounded. And they didn't say anything. Ten seconds. I said, now, uh, the next shot is going to come in. You know, they didn't know whether I was telling the truth or not. See? 
And I waited another 10 seconds, and sure enough, a white flag came up out of the chimney. I captured these guys. So I learned that you can do more with language, like I say, in things, than you can do sometimes. Anyway, the, uh, the war, for me, was a turning point in my life, okay? It gave me the chance to uh, get the GI Bill. It gave me the chance to go to law school, okay? Uh, it, g it gave me the opportunity to meet my wife, which is the best thing that ever happened to me, okay? And uh, all I can tell you girls, uh, at some point you're going to get married, hopefully. I hope you are, your marriage union will be as happy as mine was, okay? That's the best gift I can give you guys. I really mean it. Um, she was a remarkable human being, as well as a remarkable, beautiful woman, okay? And uh, she, uh, she was a, we have a, uh, in German, if you read my book, she's referred to as the Eckstein minus Lebens, which means the cornerstone of my life. My whole life was built around her, okay? And in Hebrew, it's called Rosh Pina, which is also made the cornerstone. So, um, so when your cornerstone of a building is knocked out, the building begins to totter. And that's what happened to me, okay? As great a soldier as I was in World War II and all that kind of flag wave and stuff, when you lose a, a wife like that, you know, and I lost everything. So, so I'm glad you ladies gave me the chance to talk.